Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. So we're just going to jump right into the video today. So this is going to be the second part of a six part series of simple machines. And I think which machine this is going to be will be pretty obvious as we get into the video. So here we go. I start off every mesotint by doing a quick filing of the edges so it doesn't damage the mesotint rocker teeth when I go ahead and rock it. So now I'm going to use a marker on the plate and mark off the angles that I'm going to rock. By rocking and then rotating the plate, it makes a nice even pattern of burrs on the plate. And it's pretty quick work on a plate this small. And here's the finished plate, ready to move on to the next step. Now I really get serious about filing down the edge. I want to make sure I bevel the edges enough so it does increase the paper in the corners of the plate, and also lets the press roller get up onto the plate pretty easily. After the file work, I use sandpaper mounted onto a block to finish off the edges. I work from 1000 grit up to 4000 grit paper. This makes the edge super smooth and the ink wipes off really easily. And here's my finished plate and I'm ready to go ahead and start my drawing. So here I have a sketch that I traced out of my sketchbook. I flip it over and transfer it onto the plate using wax free transfer paper. I decided that I wanted to change the shape of the plate, so I only trace the outline of what I want it to look like onto the plate. Obviously it would have been ideal to use a plate cutter before I rock the plate, but since that's really not an option at this point, I carefully use a hacksaw and cut it off. I had to be really careful not to damage any of the rock plate with the hacksaw. And now one more time filing and sanding down those new edges I just cut. Now I'm going to go ahead and transfer on the full image onto the plate like I started before. A great way to get straight lines on a mesotint is to use a straight edge and then run your scraper along it. Just be careful not to damage the plate with a straight edge, I'm using a cheap plastic one here. Now that I have the bulk of the scraping done, I'm using a burnisher to go ahead and smooth out the background. I don't want a lot of tone from the plate when I print it, so I really need to get the background smoothed out as much as possible. And here's a super close up shot of the plate. On the left you can see the scrape marks, and then in the center you can see the part that I've burnished smooth. And then up top is a full mesotin ground that hasn't been touched yet. I focus on the edges and background first for a few reasons. Honestly, it's fairly boring to clear and burnish such a large area, so I try to get out of the way as soon as possible. But also, if I'm going to mess up, it's probably when I'm working on these larger areas, so I'd much rather deal with that now rather than after I have my whole main image finished off. Now that I'm done scraping and burnishing, I'm going to get my shin paper together. 
So if you're not familiar with chincolé, it's a technique where you take a piece of paper and you print onto that paper while simultaneously gluing it down to your main backing paper. And you'll see it further down in the next steps. Chincolé is also a great way to add color or variation to one of your prints without having to use multiple plates. Now I want to create a template out of thin plastic so I can copy it exactly over and over. So I trace my design onto the plastic and then cut it out. Now I work to go ahead and refine that shape and just hold it up to the plate and make sure that it looks good and I'm happy with the fit. Alright, so after all that, I'm ready to start printing. I start off using barrier cream to make cleanup easier at the end. I'm also using a cool water-based ink for this print and the nori paste for the gluing down of the chincolet squares. I'm using a small piece of matte board to spread the ink onto the plate. You want to make sure you use something that doesn't damage the plate since the mezzotint is pretty fragile. A big part of this whole process is just trying not to mess up the plate before I get it printed. Now I'm using a piece of tarlatan, which is starched open weave fabric, to wipe the plate and remove all the ink except for what's in the burrs from the mezzotint rocker. And finally, the last step before the plate's ready to go is to go ahead and wipe down the edges. Since I spent so much time prepping the edges earlier in the steps, it makes it a lot easier now to clean them off. I'm using a piece of paper with a template on it to line up my plate. I have it taped down on the press bed and then a thin piece of plastic over it to protect it. I keep these templates with each plate and that way when I go to print the addition, it's all ready to go. I've had my paper soaking in a water bath and now I go ahead and blot it off with a towel. It's a little bit hard to do one handed with the camera. To prep the small square of paper, I brush on nori paste with a dampened brush. And then finally I can line it up on the plate, put down my paper, and go ahead and run my first print. The last step for this print is to add the line work for the great cube. I do this by using the dry point technique on a piece of plexiglass. This is just a test print, so I tape it down and trace the details that I want to add. Then I place the plexiglass on top of the tracing paper and the print. And using a fine marker, I trace the pattern onto the plastic. Now I flip over the plexiglass and use a dry point needle to scrape in the image. Make sure to flip the plate over so when it prints everything lines up correctly. And here's what the plate looks like when it's ready to ink up and print. Before I print the next proof, there was a couple areas that I wasn't happy with, so I went ahead and scraped in those areas to lighten them up some more. And now I go through the same steps as before and print the plate. Now I ink up the plexiglass plate the same way as the copper. I use a piece of thin cardstock and wipe the ink off. But the great thing about using clear plastic versus like another copper plate is you can see through it and line it up perfectly. Alright, so that wraps up this one for now. I'm going to spend a little bit more time working on the shape of the lines that's on the gray paper before I go ahead and run my finished edition, but it's pretty close to what I'm looking for right now. Since this print's going to be part of a six print series, I'm kind of working on all six of them simultaneously, and then I'm adjusting each one as they go. So I'll put this one aside for now and go ahead and get moving on the next one. So thanks so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button if you liked the video and leave a comment down below. I also wanted to thank everyone who subscribed. The channel's really grown and I love hearing from you all in the comments. I have some fun projects on the way, so make sure you subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you next time. Thanks.